Well, just touching on what you were saying there just now about referees not having to explain themselves after a poor performance. You know, it's it's old cliches. You know, you, you managers from both sides have to come and face the press after it. Players from each side have to come and face the press. Um, and, and, and even stripping it back a wee bit further, me and my own um, occupation and job, if I'm not doing the job that I'm paid to do to a level that's deemed as a good standard, then unfortunately you're in the firing line of potentially being sacked, just as you guys in your panel, if you're not bringing the, the views in or whatever. You, mm-hmm. Everyone's up for scrutiny, but it almost feels like referees can can go on to the pitch, make as many mistakes and blunders as they possibly want, which, by the way, some of them are farcical. The, the two Ryan Kent yellow cards last night, I was just, I put my hands on my head at the end and I just, I was ready to turn the game off because I thought, although Rangers weren't great, I don't think we deserve much from the game. A point, maybe, um, you know, the, 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 the standard of refereeing in Scotland, in my opinion, for years now, and it's not just me saying this as a Rangers supporter, I've watched other games, whether it be Motherwell at Hearts or, you know, any other Premiership team, and some of the decisions that you watch are just are, are, are uh, ridiculous. And I, I almost think that even if VAR was introduced into Scottish football, whether or not that's going to happen is yet to be seen. I honestly feel like if Kevin Clancy was brought to the side of the pitch to watch his decision back, I think he would just probably still stand with the decision that he made. He would be too proud to, to admit that he was wrong. That's the kind of impression that I get from Kevin Clancy, that you know what he said is right. And if he was brought in and questioned on it, I think he would still stick to his guns and, you know, some of the decisions last night, both on Rangers and Aberdeen, I thought were just a joke, to be quite honest with you. I, th- I think it'd be a bit unfair on, on Kevin Clancy, Jason, because you don't know him and he's never had the benefit of, of using VAR. So we don't know at the end of the day, once you see things back and, and referees were the same, if they've made the mistake, they'll put, they'll, they'll put their hands up, just as they do down south, um, you know, because normally when they're called over by VAR to look at the screen, then they do it. So to say that he'd be stubborn and stick by it, then I think it'd be unfair because you don't, you don't know that. Um, but he didn't have a good game last night. Absolutely right about that. Mistakes were made that that, that benefited or didn't benefit um, both teams at different stages um, during the game. But um, he got the penalty call right for me, but the red card for Ryan Kent wasn't right. And Alan McGregor got away with one um, in the first half. So it wasn't a good night. But I also agree it's mistakes by referees and officials up and down the country I think this season unfortunately has been particularly bad um, and not just in Rangers games or Celtic games all many teams and many managers many players and many sets of supporters have suffered so there's there's a there's a lack of quality unfortunately with our officials um, at the moment and VAR would certainly help them in, in terms of them coming out and speaking after games I'm kind of torn about that yeah, from a, a journalistic point of view you would want that to happen you're going to get stories, you're, you're going to get headlines, you're going to get stuff. But I don't think it would do the referees any favours. And first and foremost, the SFA and the refereeing body have got to protect themselves. Um, I know it can be frustrating when you don't get an explanation sometimes when you're left, as Barry used the word, baffled earlier in the programme when you're saying, why did they reach that decision? So I think there can be some form of explanation that can be made its way to the media, mm-hmm. whether it's through the, a, a home team's club channels or you know whatever it may be, television, radio, newspapers, then yeah, privately explain decisions, but I don't think put them up in public, Rob, would be the right thing to do. Yeah. I, I'm sure if Clancy goes and watches back the game, the, the two yellow cards, I'll go back to the, the Ryan Kent. I, I'm, I would like to think he would look back and think, ah, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Let, I let's... would like to think, uh, I, I don't know if you agree with me. Aye. I don't know him. But if he's been honest with himself, I think if he went and watched it, if he goes back after the game or today, he looks back. It's laughable that somebody can be sent off. I mean, for, I go even back, if... see the first yellow card draw, but I look at it and you've got to realise, first and foremost, Aberdeen and Rangers, you know it's going to be a fiery game. You know yeah. players are going to be right up for it 100%. It's a tangle of legs. They got up. It's handbags for me. Mm-hmm. Nothing mm-hmm. more than that. They're not even fisticuffs their heads ain't together they're having a wee bit of ding dong Ryan Kent slightly brushes them or pushes them slightly nothing that's when Kevin Clancy's you come in and say right you two two um, experienced players go on mate yeah. next one I'll book you go on with the game what are you yearning for what are you yearning for is a bit of common sense isn't it that's what it's it, a, common a, feel, sense. a feel for a football match an understanding of what the football match I'm means sure that, I, I would like it, to think that referees go into games knowing what game they're going into well like. it's not the first Rangers Aberdeen game <laughs> that Kevin Clancy's done is it we all know what Aberdeen and Rangers is like in right. Petaudry yep. we know what it's going to be like yeah. it's going to be 100 mile an hour there might be I, mean, I looked at the game I watched the game when I come in I wouldn't say it was a 
over physical game last night? No, normally no, the, I've no. seen a lot worse tackles no. and a lot worse happening in an Aberdeen and Rangers well, game. I just the, thought the, there have been, been worse incidents in games that haven't seen a player sent off. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that, that Ryan Kent walked for those offences is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it is. And that's where Kevin Clancy's made mistakes in those. And by the way, referees are human. Yep. They make mistakes. Players make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But again, we, we keep getting back to it. But I don't know how often we keep getting back to until Scottish football actually implements a system mm. that can help referees and help reach the right decision. Now, sometimes decisions can still be down to opinion, Rob, you know, rather than yeah. factual. But yeah. nine times out of ten, you'll reach the right decision. So therefore, what's the right decisions? Well, Aberdeen would have had a penalty in the first half and Ryan Kent wouldn't have been sent off. So there's two major things. And the penalty have would have been retaken. And the penalty would have been retaken. So there's three yeah, major yeah. things yeah. that, that, that would that have are all happened factual, last night. Factual things. That when a game's tight, 1-0, one, one each, would have possibly led to a different outcome. Whether that would have been Rangers winning and Aberdeen winning, mm. still, who knows. But there was three major things that didn't go right, that the referee got wrong, and then in some respects, you feel sorry for him because... We've got a, there is a system ready to come in that everybody wants, but we've not implemented it yet. That's a frustration for the whole of Scottish football. Is it, is it full time referees, Jason? Would you is think that, that would make that, a difference? Would that, would that be? I I, I don't I, I think they would only be fitter. I don't think it'll make them better but, but referees. Do you know? But when but, but, but when you go from part time to full time as a player, you expect a better yeah, performance, don't I, you? And I, I know the referees up here train three to four times a week. And I know it's at night because they've got day jobs, yeah. but I know they train for maybe two, two and a half, three hours, three or four times a week. So there's still a fair amount of training. They're fit. That's one Aye. thing you can say about a ref. They're, they're, they're fit. Yeah. Well, you don't yeah. see them now, you know, stopping for a breath <laughs> in the halfway. You, you don't see that anymore. I mean, no. there's one thing about them. You can't question their oh. levels of fitness. Basically, you can't question no. their commitment. And yeah, they'll be well paid. They're getting about a grand a game at the top mm. flight. So they're, so they're well paid. But I think they earn that money as well. I think they do. Well, um, to earn that, so yeah. How many, I mean, how many good? How many? How many? If you were putting together a group of elite Scottish football referees, I mean, how many are referees that you think? Yeah, zero, absolutely well, none. Yeah. I would, I would, I'm sorry to say that, but in my, in my opinion, absolutely zero. Um, I mean, you're saying there just now that they're fit. I mean, that's that's great if they're fit, if they want to be an athlete or something. But they're not there yeah. to be fit. They're there to manage football games and mm-hmm. and control it. And yeah. they're not doing that. They're, they're making it uncontrollable. I mean, last night, Kevin Clancy, it was almost like, and I hate to tell you, I'm not, don't like go after him and, and sort of victimise the guy, but it was like their job on the football park is to control the game, keep everything under wraps, try and make sure that nobody's going to get sent off unnecessarily, you know, make sure that the game goes from minute one to 90 to try and get the best spectacle for both sets of fans in Scottish football because it was live on Sky Sports last night. And if I'm, a, if I'm somebody from down south and I turn it on, I'm watching that referee and I'm like that, pfft. I turn it off. Yeah. I, I honestly, I would have turned it off. I'd have thought to myself, what, what is this guy playing at? Is this, is this a standard in Scotland? But what, what I'm keen to know is, and maybe you guys can shed a little, little bit of light on it, is um, how does, a, how does a, a, a sort of part-time referee go from maybe refereeing in the championship? I mean, what, what, what's the levels? How do they get to you know, part-time? How is it judged? How do they go from being like League One championship to then going into, say, like a premiership game? What, what, how is it, how's the merit on that? How do they get judged for it? Yeah. For going from one class to the next the one, the ones at lower level when they're refereeing say for instance a League 2 game they've got refereeing supervisors mm-hmm. who, so they're given marks out of yeah. 10 basically aren't yeah. they yeah. Yeah. that's, that's that, the way it works yeah. um, Jason but I'm just wondering that if you had full time referees um, I'm not so concerned about that I think they're fit enough I, I don't think that's the issue I, I think it's about having a feel for football and having an ability to, to handle big games mm-hmm. uh, handle the pressure of big games and, and if if you if you were paying them as full timers, so paying them more, could you then not expect a better standard? And would you not get better re- referees coming through? People wanting to be referees because the job paid more and it was a full time job. But, but well, I would say first and foremost, then Rob, rather than investing in full time referees and and the salaries, you know, like to, to have, say for example, ten full time refs in, in Scotland or eight full time refs in Scotland. First and foremost, it'd be cheaper to put Van in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you look at an investment of that, say for, for three years, you, you do a full time program with referees for three years, it'd be cheaper to put Varan. So I think that the ideal scenario, given the financial constraints that we have in Scottish football, is keep referees as they are, because 
their fitness are there they're committed the standard's no great I think they're an honest bunch I don't think mm. you know they're, they're, how, do you the, how do you improve the standard but then, then? And, and, well that's down to the referees that's <laughs> I don't know how you improved it. Well, I do know how you improved the standard. First and foremost, bring in VAR. No, 100%. And it's not that the referees are against it and, you know, they want help. Mm-hmm. Kevin Clancy doesn't he want to be going home last night. You know, driving in the car. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have sent Ryan Kent off. I should have given Aberdeen a penalty. He doesn't want to be waking up this morning no. and listening to this programme and looking at the headlines getting blasted on social media. Listening to guys like Jason having a pop-up. Does he want that? No, I, so if you to offer him a scenario, mm-hmm. Kevin... Do you want to go through what you've just been through in the past 24 hours or do you want the benefit of that? I think they're honest enough. I honestly think our referees are honest enough and I think Kevin Clancy will look back at the game, which they've got to do. Mm -hmm. They've got to look back and think of their Mm -hmm. decisions they've made. I think him being an honest guy will look back and think he's made some mistakes. But the only way you're going to be able to help referees, yep, great, but if they, we can afford to get them full time but first and foremost we need to get VAR in to help them yeah but back to Jay, the, the the very first point that Jason made and that was about uh, referees being a protected <coughs> species unlike anyone else in football everyone else get, we get slated if we get it wrong as we frequently do uh, players managers coaches chairman mm-hmm. all the rest of it Every, everybody gets criticism in yeah. football apart from and everyone has to face it apart mm-hmm. from a referee I know I take your point about putting them up at a media conference no yeah. because it would be like, a bit like a firing squad wouldn't it yeah. but can, could the referee not independently if, if he felt the need to say something just stand in front of a camera just stand in front of a camera make a 30 second statement and say look you know having had the benefit of look viewing the video I got that wrong and I apologise. And, you know, then you kind of know, then, then the referees explained themselves. I, I think there's certain instances where if, if you're baffled, like, you know, I, I don't necessarily would like to see Kevin Clancy come out last night and... Tell Alexa to launch Go Radio or listen on the Go Radio app.